population is a very important parameter to study for understanding environments and especially paleo environments. Paleobotanists and others have attempted for a long time to figure out how to estimate paleo precipitation in a much more accurate way, but it still eludes them. One such researcher is Matthew Cohn in 2011. He published an algorithm that related mean annual precipitation, altitude and latitude to the delta carbon 13 um, content of leaves and it, he based it on 500 samples of modern leaves. But his algorithm was never tested in a modern flora. And so that is my aim today and in the near future to collect uh, leaves, both living leaves and leaf litter and wood across Texas. So why Texas? Well, Texas has a great amount of uh, change of precipitation from east to west from around 1,500 millimeters in the east around Belmont to less than 300 millimeters in the west to El Paso. So we should be able to get a really good idea of uh, how the precipitation changes and how the uh, stable carbon isotope changes. So in order to do that, the first thing I wanted to do was to go ahead and build a map. And the map that you see here is a map of uh, pre is predicted carbon isotope uh, based on Cohn's algorithm. And so from the dark on the east is the uh, most negative to the red, tiny little bits of red on the west that you can see in the map, which is uh, more positive. Uh, in order to do that, I had to collect, uh, and I'm not done collecting, there's still lots more collecting to be done. Uh, little stars on the map indicate areas I've collected. So from west to east, that would be the Franklin Mountains north of El Paso, the Davis Mountains in West Texas, uh, where I had two areas that I collected, uh, Garner State Park area uh, in the yellow zone, along with uh, a privately owned ranch, two privately owned ranches, Steinhoff Ranch and the Y.O. Ranch, uh, Inks Lake, which is a state park area, uh, Liberty, Texas, which is near the Trinity River, and uh, the Big Thicket area of East Texas. There are also some, zo some zones I need to collect in between San Antonio and Houston, um, but that's future information. So those samples were collected. They were dried in an oven at about 50 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours and more like 48 hours in most cases. Uh, the samples were ground up using a Wiley mill and uh, tiny, tiny little bits amount of, of about 100 micrograms were put into small tin capsules and combusted. And the combusted gases were separated in a, a column and then conducted through an IR mass spec. Okay. And what did we find? <laughs> well, here's what we found. Uh, the green line on the graph here indicates the predicted uh, 13, delta 13 carbon amounts based on Cohn's algorithm. Um, and the blue or kind of purpley data points here indicate what the actual delta 13C was that from our samples. And you can probably see from that that in the western area uh, they were very close, and then they begin to diverge as you go to the wetter, more eastern areas there. When we compare them in a bar graph, with the green again being the predicted mean annual precipitation, so we turned the algorithm on its head and saw, okay, based on this is what the delta 13C was, what would the mean annual precipitation be? Because this is what you want to do for paleobotany. You don't have actual mean annual precipitation. You want to know what it is. You have the delta 13C. So what would the cone algorithm predict? Okay, so the green is what it would predict, but the blue is what the actual mean annual precipitation is. Again, you can see it's a lot more accurate in the drier areas to the west of Texas. Um, 
and then begins to diverge as you move east and is a lot more divergent uh, as you go to the wetter environments. Okay. Surprisingly, overall, the Texas data has a very good fit with the cone data with an R-squared of uh, 0 0.92. Um, and you wouldn't think so to look at this, okay, but it really is a good fit to that. The logarithmic fit, though, does indicate that there will be poor discrimination in wetter environments because it's flattening out here. So really, you're not going to be able to distinguish in the 1500 to 2000 and beyond uh, millimeter range. Um, and that is supported by the poor precision that we have, or the poor accuracy that is shown um, by the bar graph. There are, does remain to be a lot more work done on this, uh, which we intend to do in the very near future. Thank you.